there are a lot of things that just tie together uh, with the FDH Lounge and just kind of lead and flow from one thing to another with this, uh, this journey of the last four years. And as we've kind of set out tonight, even before that, some of the, the roots and the things that go back uh, prior to the, uh, the lounge, some of the precursors of it. But in the course of everything that we've done here, we become friends through the FDH New York Bureau, Steve Servillo, with uh, Ira Lieberfarb, uh, known as Ira from Staten Island, one of the greatest talk show radio callers, maybe the, probably the greatest talk show radio caller in the history of New York terrestrial radio. So I was pre privileged to get to meet up with Ira in person at the Browns-Jets game in November after having him on the show a number of times as our resident Jets expert. So I'm sitting there with Ira in the stands and catching up with him and getting to talk football, and it's just, just a lot of fun uh, to be able to do that. I mean, it was, it was cold. We, we, were, we were freezing, uh, but it was a good time. And then uh, Ira ends up waving over this gentleman here. So he's got two friends that uh, he occasionally sees at these games. They're big Jets fans also. And it turns out, lo and behold, uh, there's, a, there's a story to what these guys are doing that is uh, absolutely incredible. Uh, if, you, if you didn't know it was true, if you didn't see it being documented, you'd have a hard time believing it. We have a link up to their blog here tonight at royaltytours.blogspot.com. It's Royalty Tours USA. And I'm speaking specifically of the Prince, Gary Herman, a new friend who I've been uh, looking forward to welcoming in here. We've had this uh, set up for about two months now to bring him in. It's good to have him in. Gary, welcome to the FDH Lounge tonight, my friend. How are you? I'm doing fabulous, Rick. How are you? Oh, doing great, doing great. It's uh, wonderful on a show like this uh, to, to get to look back at some of the things that we've done, get to reprise uh, some so, an, an interview with, with, a, with a great guest from previously and sort of symbolize everything that lies ahead. I'm sure this is the first of uh, a number of different times we'll get to catch up with you with your, your, your schedule notwithstanding. But it's, it's great to be able to have you in and tell this story. It is such a unique story, uh, Gary. You, the prince, traveling with the king here, 350-plus sporting events per year, and it's all true and documented. Yes, it is. So first and foremost, I want to thank you very much for having me on the air. I definitely look forward to being on the air in the future. And we average around 350 events, give or take. But the, the reason why he's the king, he sees over 400 events a year. As I documented in my year in review, he actually saw 418 total events. But he's more an emphasis on professional, which he wound up falling short of 400 and he had 399. I wound up with 338 total events. But I make all the arrangements. I do all the executing, all the traveling, all the, all the little things. That's why... Tonight I was trying to keep keep this night open. I probably knew in the back of my mind there was a game somewhere he could get to, but I didn't say nothing because I was hoping he could join me. But, of course, that wasn't possible because we have a friend in Philadelphia that was looking out for him because he didn't have his calendar handy. He has no idea where, where he's going one day to the next. So all of a sudden, the guy, Frankie, we know from Philadelphia, calls him up and told him he has a ticket for him for the Capitol Flyer game. So that's where the king is. Well, you know, 338 uh, sporting events last year, uh, Gary. You're slacking, man. At, at your pace, that's like you spent two weeks on a beach in Tahiti or something here, you know? You're yeah, used to 350-plus. Well, yeah, on average. That, I'm, uh, I'm, really slacking. I'm really slacking now because I'm only up to 13. I've already had six. This is my sixth night off. Uh-huh. Well, this... So off to a slow start. There, there are so many different aspects of this that I love. The fact that you guys have been to every stadium or arena in the big four sports in this country, uh, NHL, NBA, MLB, NFL, uh, and that you've been to, because of the turnover in stadiums and arenas with construction in the last 15 to 20 years, many that no longer even exist. You've been to countless minor league stadiums and arenas. Same thing with college sports, whether it be basketball or, or football. But some of the things that I love the most uh, about you guys are just the random things. The, the notion of you guys catching, uh, what was it, a uh, a home-and-home home with, who was it, the Lightning and the Capitals, I guess? Oh, yeah, the King did that. And okay. He fond of it, yeah. He yeah, did, why don't you tell that. us about that? I remember that. He, he, flew, he went down to Washington on a Friday night, and the Capitals were playing the Lightning, and then the next night we saw them that Saturday night in Tampa. But yeah, yeah. Here, here's the great part. You guys took the train down to D.C., right? Well, he went by himself. I didn't go. Yeah, he always takes oh. a bus or a train. Okay. And, goes, and, and takes, a, takes a crazy trip down to Philadelphia, usually the night before we fly somewhere early in the next morning. 
Well, it's best when he goes. He's like the only one on the plane that's going back to work. He used to start at midnight. Now he starts at two in the morning. Mm-hmm. It's a killer hour. He runs right to work. No sleep. Uh, seeing all those events, you know, you do the math, 365 days. Well, obviously, he's seeing two games in some of the days, but those days he actually has a rare night off. This guy's going going places with his eyes half closed. He always says he's, his eyes are wide open when he goes to a game. Somehow he manages to stay awake. I guess uh, somehow you just fall into a routine and you're, you're able to, to focus on it, and uh, it's something that the rest of us probably just couldn't do. But, yeah, that story in particular, I mean, because I'm a connoisseur of great stories, and as I've told people about some of the things that you guys have done, I, I, I heard about that one when I was at the Browns game when you and I were talking. I mean, something about that, about the King – Taking a train down to Washington, watching the the the, uh, the the Capitals and the Lightning, take the train home, okay, and then you fly to Tampa the next day so that you can see both halves of the home and home series. I mean, that is that that's the kind of thing. It's the sheer randomness of something like that. Neither one of you guys is a Capitals fan or a Lightning fan, but the, you know, if if there's if there's a random story out there that just symbolizes the whole living the dream thing, it it might be something like that one. Oh yeah, absolutely. So I need to have everything pre-planned. I used to try to pre-plan everything, but speaking of about planning things on the on the fly, this Sunday, like you said, you know we're going to Pittsburgh to see the Steelers. Just before I left work today, I secured a few tickets for the King and I. What's really funny is that we were in Foxborough Sunday night, and we were driving back. Normally, we would have a nice victory dinner somewhere at a gourmet restaurant, but we wound up in Warwick, Rhode Island at a Wendy's. But little did we know we were going to run into a whole load of Jet fans and it's one guy in particular, Brian Moffitt. He's also from Staten Island. I mentioned Ira Lieberfarb, uh, Ira from Staten Island. He said he knows of him. He's a lifelong Jet fan. And we worked out. He got a ticket. His son hooked him up to get a ticket for the Steel game. And we got talking. I didn't know him from a hole in the wall, but we're going to be meeting him Saturday. We're going to be driving. Fourth week, me, the King, and him are going to be driving to Pittsburgh Sunday morning. And then we're going to drive back overnight which I already did. This is my third trip to Pittsburgh in the last few months because Thanksgiving weekend we had to get the Constell Energy Center out of the way to have every NHL car in the arena. So we went there. We went to Wheeling with our friend Lloyd and drove back overnight to get back to New York so we can come to the – we went to the Jaguar Giant game that afternoon, and we saw the Nets Blazers that night, and I was exhausted. I, I drove all the way back 422 miles or so. And then we were in Pittsburgh to open the new year. We went to the Winter Classic, and thanks to Mother Nature, we inherited an unexpected game in Youngstown State because we were in Columbus the night before. And our friends, both in opera, in particular Mike Err, who lives in Pittsburgh, and he's instrumental because he's the one that got us. He's the one that's going to be meeting somebody tomorrow in Pittsburgh and giving the money for the tickets that we're going to be using for Sunday's Jet Steeler game. Well, we to, then we went to the Winter Classic, and I had to drive back overnight for that also to see a, a jet exhibition game, as it turned out, to go along with the one I, the one I, the rare one I saw on August 16th. But this Sunday will be my 27th NFL game for the season, including the exhibition game. I was in New England Sunday, and we were in Philadelphia the Sunday before. And people are asking me, are you not going to Indianapolis? Well, I wish I could go everywhere, but I can only afford to do so much. I did go to Indianapolis last year. We actually went to New England last year over Cincinnati, and I got questions for that. The week after that, we went to San Diego, and we also saw the Kings and the Clippers play. And then the week after that, I went to the championship game in Indianapolis. And now we're going back for more. And I'm afraid that if the Jets win, I really want to go to the Super Bowl. But I know there's no way in the world to have the financial resources to be able to do it. I don't know what to say about that, but... I expect the Jets to beat the Steelers, and I know Ira from Staten Island is not going to miss it, so he'll definitely be at the Super Bowl. He'll he'll find a way. He always does, you know, by by hook or by crook. Uh, <laughs> Ira makes it to all of the, uh, the the games, no matter where they're at. But w- what you guys do too, uh, obviously, is is so remarkable in its own right. Uh, I, I, another one of my favorite stories, again, uh, the the Winter Classic in Pittsburgh. How how great is that? You guys are there. Thing gets bumped back from one o'clock to eight o'clock at night due to the rain. Everything oh, gotta yeah. go somewhere. Gotta go. Gotta go watch something. Hey, Youngstown State's playing down the road. I mean that that going to Youngstown State hoops game is just uh, you know to, to borrow the word from that weekend classic. Well, we also had Cleveland State, but realistically, I looked at my 
my uh, BlackBerry, and I was able to fill out the mileage and the, and, the lo- and the logistics of it. The game started at 2 o'clock there, and it was a longer ride, so Youngstown State made all the sense in the world. Thanks to our friend Manny Morales and, like I said, Mike Earth for looking out for us. We were staying in Washington, PA, and by the time we found out, it was too late to cancel the room, so I had to drive a little extra. But we do whatever it takes. That's what royalty is all about. Whatever it takes to get the job done and to minimize the cost and maximize the enjoyment. Yep. Like I said earlier, the king... The king, you know, he may be exhausted, but he loves what he's doing, so he finds a way to keep his eyes open, even if he needs toothpicks to keep them open. Well, here, here's a great thing, too. Folks can go on, on, on the site here, royaltytours.blogspot.com, go through as I've done. I really encourage anybody to, to, to comb through some of the stories. It's only more so in recent years that you've been chronicling things to the degree that you have, but you, you, you have chronicled some things on there going back, and you can get a feel for what things have been like over the years from that. Well, one of my favorite, again, random things from there, and either one of you guys lives or has lived in Chicago, and yet the King just saw his 100th game at Wrigley Field. That, something like that is just incredible to me. Oh, absolutely. Wrigley Field is the greatest ballpark on earth. So if you've never been there, I strongly suggest you get there. And it's really funny. I met a guy, Andrew Van Cleve, that actually lives right up the block from there. But I found out he's moving to Philadelphia because his wife's going to be a professor at Temple University over the summer. But I'm sure he knows all kinds of ticket connections. I know all kinds of great people all around this great country. So there's all kinds. There's, as long as you have a will, there's always a way. I went to Yankee Stadium. This is, this is an amazing story. I went to Yankee Stadium August 6th this past year, 2010, a Red Sox-Yankee game on a Friday night. I was going the Labor Day weekend. The King couldn't make it due to work or whatever. I went out to, to, to the great Northwest. I, went to, I was going to see the Argonne Ducks play that weekend. You know, the time to be announced, but it goes on forever. So I was at Yankee Stadium where we sit right behind home plate upstairs. All the, that's where our season tickets are, section 420D, row 7. And I saw this guy with this Oregon Duck shirt on. I asked him, hey, you happen to know what time the game is on September 4th? And uh, it's still probably be an early game. We got talking. This guy is visiting New York with his family, his, his wife, his two sons and a daughter, and their in-laws with them. And we were talking. I wound up taking these people all the way back to their hotel in Midtown Manhattan, and we've been in touch ever since. This gentleman, Kevin Feist, he, he was the high school coach for Kellen Clemens. He wow. started Oregon, and he's been on the holding a clipboard with the Jets. But these people are great people. His son Khalid Feist, who I met with his friends at the Oregon game, because he said he was going to be there, and I arranged to meet these kids. It was, it was unbelievable. I mean, and they're all fans of my blog. I, I got so many people involved in my blog. It's incredible. Absolutely it's really amazing. I mean- you can keep tracking that uh, on there, and you know you you've uh, intersected with some other folks who who also go to a whole bunch of games in, in other places here too. Some of the ultimate road trip fellows uh, that uh, uh-huh. you you cross paths with from time to time, and that gets recounted on your blog. So many different things. Uh, that you that you guys have done just going back over time again if we're just talking about I'm the kind of guy I love a lot of the random kind of stuff I love the, the, the one thing on there you and I were laughing about this off air uh, Gio Gonzalez nice young pitcher for Oakland got himself a nice upside but I mean right now I, I think you'd just say maybe a little bit above average as a pitcher with room to grow but you you kind of got to be enamored of him because it was it was funny as you're tracking it through here you're looking at it, you're going man we just missed seeing him by one day in Kansas City, and then we missed seeing him by one day in Cleveland, and then we missed seeing him by one day in New York, and all of a sudden it got to be a thing of, hey, got to see this guy. We keep missing him by one day in the rotation. I mean, that's the kind of stuff that cracks me up. That's a, that's a beautiful story. Gio, he, he's such a great young guy. It's amazing. What happened with him is I remember he got drafted. He's been bounced around. He got traded for Jim Comey. He went from the White Sox to the Phillies. He was in the Philly organization. The only time I saw him pitch was in Norwich, Connecticut, back in 2006. He was pitching for the Reading Phillies, and I remember he pitched really well. He pitched like seven strong innings. I thought that guy looked like a real good pitcher. And then we were in Sacramento. I knew it hurt the King a lot to miss a Met Giant game because it's always major league first over minor league. But we went to a minor league game in Sacramento on a Friday night because we got to get these ballparks eventually by my way of doing things. And he was sitting at a table signing autographs, and I told him, I saw you pitch – in Reading, for Reading in Norwich. And he's like, oh, you know, he always said to stay positive. 
And I, I told her, I travel all over the place. I'm going to try. It was really funny because we next year he pitched this incredible game at Yankee Stadium. And, of course, were we there? No. It was July 25th. We were in Boston that night. We like to go to Fenway Park at least once every year. And I've been there 91 times now, at least once every year since 1986. And we missed Gio that day, and I, I've been tracking him ever since. And it's just incredible how it worked out again last year, like you said. Uh, yeah, we were in Cleveland. He pitched a Friday night, pitched a beautiful game. He pitched in Kansas City another Friday night, and we were there Saturday. Then he comes to Yankee Stadium. It's amazing. A four-game series. I knew somehow I would miss him, and I went to Seattle because he pitched. He pitched this Sunday, and he pitched that Friday. And the Yankee and the Yankees played Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Thursday afternoon. And I went to Seattle that Thursday afternoon, where I met up with this other guy, Joey Kraft, that I met at the World Series in 2009. It's just amazing all the incredible people I've met just in my travels in the last year or two, no less. Knowing the King for 25 years and, and his whole menagerie of guys that we know that go to sporting events. Unfortunately, some have passed on. But there's others that have just disappeared. Others still come around once in a while. It's just incredible. Well, well if, you, out. If, if, you're, if you're looking for the course over the course of the next year or even two, uh, looking ahead here, uh, at uh, where uh, accessible from your part of the country, Gio Gonzalez is likely to pitch a good game. Definitely catch him next time he's in Cleveland here. I think the odds will be very good that he'll have a very good game to his credit. Uh, I can say as a very bitter Indians fan, the odds are very much in your favor of uh, seeing a sterling outing from young Gio Gonzalez uh, here in Cleveland at the very least. Uh, something I'd like to ask you, I mean, I guess it's the elephant in the room when we keep hearing uh, these stories and everything like this. Obviously, you know, you, you've indicated, you know, you, you've learned the ins and outs of this. You've, you've learned how to... To, to, to keep the costs minimal and everything like this. But I must say, I mean, me personally, uh, if, if, if I were to be a hobo crossing country by rail, uh, I couldn't do this uh, on the tickets and everything else like this. I mean, everything that comes with this, and you've alluded to uh, your work schedule and the Kings, uh, so you, you guys are, are definitely working within confines here. I mean, certainly that's got to be the number one thing people are wondering on something like this. How are these guys able to make this happen? Oh, well, thanks for the greatest invention of our lifetime. This internet is amazing. Because they don't want to pay people to do jobs. I used to call on the telephone and try to make reservations for car rent. I usually always rent cars all the time. I have an older car, and people tell me I should buy a new car. I live in New York, and where I live, there's no alternate side. But it's a lot easier just get a nice new car, have friends chip in, people come along. It's all about teamwork. You can't do everything by yourself. I wish I could, but without the help of all these great people I've met and all the friends I know, we all put our heads together. We cut the cost to say this guy wants to drive, so I don't have to rent the car. He wants us to drive, too. That's not a problem. I was ready to drive there and back myself with the king. So, you know, cutting the cost, yeah, there's so many ways to get deals. But I'm just so busy that it's hard sometimes to get the best possible deal. But there's so many deals out there. you got you got to know people. It's all about connections. But meeting all these great people, i got people all over the country. So if I need help with something, there's usually somebody there that I can at least ask. And then when they want to come to New York, I do my best to accommodate them. Well, well obviously, that, that, that kind of reciprocity will take you a long way. Is, is it one of these things also, Gary, where, where when, you're, when you're looking at this, I mean, I, I see a lot of things here in, in the course of your blog where you're talking about your, uh, what, what you're able to do with attending sporting events. And it stands to reason that, obviously, uh, during the work week, the bulk of what you guys are able to do is – in the New York area, maybe Philly, anything that's directly accessible on a work night. Is it one of these things where you basically can do these things and that's more or less by rote, okay, I'm going to the Garden tonight, I'm going to the Prudential Center tomorrow, whatever. But but these these road trips, it seems to me, these are the ones when, when you guys are doing a bunch of events and bundling things. It's, is it something where you're, you're planning ahead weeks and weeks on the road trips and more or less handling uh, the things that are a close drive on a weeknight sort of uh, just on a, on a basis that you're used to? Oh, yeah, you, you hit it right on the head. That's exactly what I do. I have minimal time off. I have minimal money I make. But, yeah, when I'm local, we live in the Northeast. We live in New York. We have access to nine or ten major league teams. So the number of events pile up as opposed to these great guys we know from Buffalo, Andrew Kulik and Peter Farrell. 
these guys have been to all the all the stadiums as well. They have an incredible website. It's on my blog list. Uh, you know, they live in Buffalo, so they they can't get to all these you know, all these games every night of the week. But the road trips, I have a photographic memory. I have everything down. I'm getting more technologically based. I have this incredible Excel sheet. It has everything plotted out. I pretty much know the schedule in my head. The other day, the King's going to handwrite his schedule on a, a weekly calendar, his daily minder, and it's ama- he's always amazed how I could just reel off. They just wing out a date. I was doing that in high school, too. It's like, just wing out a date, and I'll tell you exactly who's playing, and I'll write it down on his schedule so he knows. He has no idea where he's going one day from the next. Me, I have it all figured out. I have it months in advance. I'm pretty much set till September now. I'll change a few things along the way, but... You know, I usually have it all documented. I know I'm, I went to the Winter Classic uh, to open the year. We have a trip. Another reason why I may not be able to go to the Super Bowl more than likely is I just booked this very expensive trip to go to the Heritage Classic in Calgary over President's Day weekend. We're going to be going back to Edmonton and Calgary. We, we, the only time we were there is back in 1998. So we're going to be doing that as well. I was dying to go to London to see the, the Nets over there because I haven't gone – when there's been football because the king can't go because it interferes with the World Series or the League Championship Series. And he's the baseball king, after all. Mm-hmm. He's seen 243 baseball games last year alone, and most of them were major league. That is, I mean, the, these statistics are mind-boggling on, on everything that's able to be accomplished. They're 243, and that's, of course, within about a six- to seven-month period there. That, that's if you include uh, the playoffs uh, in that total also, but but you, you obviously can't be seeing games quite as often during the playoffs when there are so few games relative to the regular season. Uh, approximately going back in time, what are the origins? Uh, more or less, when did you get out on the road regularly, and uh, how much further back is it for the King? Well, the King got, got going like in 1981. He's a, little older. He's a lot older than I am, but we met up in 1985, and it's just been unbelievable. Our first real road trip, we used to take Greyhound, which is funny, back in 1988, that was our first trip, we were like our first trip together. We hit the road. I remember I worked in retail, and I was able to go. We went like three different weeks in a row. We came back on the weekend or something. It was, it was just wild. I went to Wrigley Field for the very first time. And I've been there every year since 1988. The place is off the charts. It's just been unreal. Every year we're traveling. In 1984, I remember going out to see my uncle in California. I went to uh, the Summer Olympics. I saw a baseball, a baseball doubleheader in the Olympics in Dodger Stadium. I went to San Diego. I was in Oakland. I went in 1986 to Anaheim and Candlestick Park. Then 1988, I hit the road with the King. We'd been like on a 20-plus year rampage. And it's funny, we were on Greyhound from like 1988. 1989, 1990, and I got to relive those days uh, a few weeks ago because of Mother Nature. I flew out to Chicago, and Southwest Airlines due to the weather canceled my flight, and I had to get back to work. My only resort was I, I wanted to rent a car, but they wanted an arm and a leg, so I had to resort to taking like an 18-hour bus ride back from Chicago, which I remember doing back in the late 80s. We left my friend James Gabriel, and I went to Wrigley Field, and we caught a bus around 5.45 on a Friday after a Cub Astro game, and we came all the way back to New York the next morning around 11.45 in the morning. Probably went to a game the next day, too, knowing how crazy we are. That's right. Yeah, you got caught out there. Uh, There was the Bears-Jets game that you were out to see, uh, ironically now with the Final Four being set, a potential Super Bowl preview, as it were, but uh, you were out there for that at Soldier Field, and uh, I think it was Wednesday of that week. I ended up getting a, uh, uh, a, a text. I remember it was a text message or an email from you. It indicated you were on Greyhound. You were sending it, obviously, from your phone. You were going to be passing through uh, downtown, yeah, yeah, I guess making a change at the Greyhound station there at midnight. I, I, I was not able to make it, uh, but, Gary, I will tell you, if there was any one person that I would have relished the chance to uh, drive through bad snow to get to a crappy, violent area of town at midnight to talk to, it would have been you, but uh, on a work night, no less. But uh, with those factors being in play, it just wasn't in the cards. But uh, these are the kind of things, I guess, you have to adapt to when you've got the schedule that you do. Oh, yeah, it's just amazing. Yeah, I thought it was great. I thought I was possibly running into you. There's another lady I know from Cleveland that we met up in Japan. Her name is Beth Ann and her son, Dustin. 
We met a few other people in Japan when we saw the Mets there back in 2000. Yeah, we go to Cleveland every year, so I see plenty of Indian games. And, and when I was in Chicago, we saw the Blackhawks also, and this guy Bob DeVries, we, we met up with him. It was funny because he was talking about Gio Gonzalez earlier, and he, he was actually out in Oakland that Sunday before he came to Yankee Stadium. He saw him pitch, and he pitched damn well that day. Bob had got us tickets to go to the Blackhawk game, and he gave me a ride from, United, from the Bear game to the United Center because I didn't have a car rental, and I wound up taking a train to my hotel downtown. Yeah, that was a wild trip. And I, I wound up getting back to the hotel, and I had to walk over to Greyhound, lug my bags there, find my way home, shovel snow just to get into the house. It's just been what an adventure. Well, that's uh, the price you got to pay to uh, travel like royalty sometimes. Uh, no question about that. I think uh, one of the other things people are going to want to know, going to want to hear from you, we talked about this with Wrigley before. You've indicated that that would certainly at least be on a short list of your uh, favorites. But in, in having been to all the places out there, I remember a couple of years ago some folks were kind of surprised uh, that uh, there was a survey of the, all the arenas and stadia in the Big Four that was done by the Sporting News. And of all things, the number one thing above Wrigley Field, Yankee Stadium, uh, Lambeau Field, etc., was actually a nationwide arena in Columbus where the Blue Jackets play. So that was kind of a surprise. So, I mean, having been to all of these ones here and even sort of the unlikely favorites like nationwide, give us a short list of what some of the best ones are that, that you've been to. And obviously you've been to all of them. Well, I'd say the old ones, but it's, it's ironic that you bring up nationwide because I was there New Year's Eve for the fifth time. We were there 10 years ago on New Year's Eve. Everybody raves about that place, and I can see why. It really is a beautiful place. That place is really it is one of the best modern arenas. There's no doubt about that. But I'm, I'm an old-time fan. I was fortunate enough to be – I'm just old enough to be able to say I went to the great Chicago Stadium. That place was unreal. I went to the Maple Leaf Gardens, the Boston Garden, the Montreal Forum, all these great old venues. Uh, Lambeau Field twice before they renovated it to see the Jets. I've seen the Jets in over 30 stadiums all over the country, including Champaign, Vanderbilt. And you go to these college venues, they're, they're unreal. So those places are amazing. Even the new renovated uh, Soldier Field, what they did to that place is unbelievable. If you can afford to sit in the upper deck in the first few rows, I mean, the players, it's like old Tiger Stadium. The players are literally in your lap. It was unbelievable. It's so, it's so intimate. The way it used to be, it was all pushed back. Now it's like straight up. It was an unbelievable view. And it was freezing cold that day when I was there, but it, it was unreal. The Tiger Stadium, Fenway Park, you just can't beat those places. Now, Jacobs Field's a nice place. It's unfortunate it's so deserted these days, but that's a nice place to watch a ball game. Mm -hmm. the, queue, the queue right across the street. It's unfortunate that the trader ran away. Yeah, well, yeah. They ran away from town. It was funny because after I met you at the Browns game, I just you know, I knew that you know you're, you're crisscrossing the country here, and I said I said hey you know maybe we'll catch you you know if you're in for a Cavs game or something. <laughs> I love the straightforwardness and directness here of the Prince. You were like, I got to be perfectly honest with you. I'm perfectly honest with everyone I deal with. No, I will not be coming in for a Cavs game this year. That will not be happening. So I was like, okay, well maybe during baseball season and. I think you're down for, like, July 7th or something. So if I'm in town on July 7th, we'll definitely hook up for a baseball game. Now, it, it's great that you can do that, plan it out like that. You know, you, you sent me your past itinerary and, and where you'd been and everything like that going back through the years, at least the years that you had documented in Excel, and it is – just eye popping. One would be uh, well advised to uh, duct tape your head so it doesn't explode as you're reading something like that. I mean, every place that you've been, you know, the, the way that you have it documented, uh, this is, you know, you are leaving behind uh, something big for posterity, my man. No question about that. I greatly appreciate that. It's all the facts. There's no make believe here. I have ticket stubs. My mother, my mother would kill me. She just thinks, oh, I know it's ball games. I have so much stuff, it's unreal. Um, and the memory bank I have, and all this technology now, the digital camera and a BlackBerry, it's amazing what you can do. And all this, and this blog that I got to start, even while going to all these games, that has to be the most amazing thing of all. But I love to write. I just needed to get a push. And this guy from Japan, Sean McDonald, that I know, he saw him in Pittsburgh. He knew that we were going to be in town. This guy comes, he's been coming, we didn't know him 
to like 2003. We met him through the guys from Buffalo. But he he came, he saw on my schedule last year, January 31st, the Kings happens to be a Red Wings fan, and they were going to be in Pittsburgh, and he never got to the Civic Arena. So he was going to be in Atlanta. He took a special plane ride to Pittsburgh to meet up with us so he can see a game there and see us, and I drove him back to the airport. And then he gave me that final push to get this blog started, and it's been rolling ever since. And all the people I meet, all the encouragement I get, I love it. I got a guy from Stadium Journey, Paul Swanee, who I met through Andrew Van Cleve. He got, got in touch with me. I've never met the person, but this guy from Stadium Journey is on my on my list. He has write-ups. He has people do write-ups. He does write-ups about every venue, all four sports, college, even doing stuff in the uh, in the soccer in, in London. The England soccer, these guys from Buffalo went over there. It's just un- unreal. It, uh, I, got to talk to, I got to catch up with Stadium Journey. He did an interview on me. Asked me how I, how I do it. How can you see all these 350 events while working? Well, you got to close your eyes during lunch every so often. You know, do whatever it takes to stay afloat and maintain a workload. Yeah, it, it is amazing how uh, how you and the King are making it happen. No question about that. We're going to head to this year. Uh, I, I, you, you touched on a few things here. Are, are there any keynote things that are really kind of jumping out as you're seeing it right now? I mean, obviously, you're able to, with the release of the MLB schedule, go as far as, as looking at uh, the season there. You're, you're obviously handicapped and looking past that because you're not. we're not going to know the – well, first of all, the NFL probably won't be playing next year, at least at the outset. But the NBA, the NHL, you don't know that beyond this year. But from what you do know, from what you can see, what, what are some of the big things jumping out at you? Well, like I said earlier, the, the, the Heritage Classic is going to be a real big one now. It's not the Winter Classic out of the way. The AFC Championship game is now coming right up. The Super Bowl, as much as I'm dying to go there, I – Resorting to the fact that probably not going to be in that monstrosity anyway. I love Texas Stadium, but this new monstrosity in Dallas, the new Jerry, Jerry's World, or whatever you want to call it, I'm probably better off in front of a TV screen with fellow Jet fans watching the game instead of that corporate crowd. So we're everyday type people. We cater to all walks of life. So I probably feel better being, being home as opposed to being there. Unfortunately, I would love to be there, but just really like the king always says it's not he knows his place and i don't think we fit so you know but, uh, going going forward uh, i'm planning to go to open the season up in, in florida kings are a little reluctant it depends on his work schedule but my uncle moved to florida a few years ago i like to go visit him they're closing down dolphin stadium or sunlight stadium as it's now known i know it's not the greatest of stadiums but we we haven't seen a regular season game there since 1993 the last Game of the year, I think it was a rain-shortened game. They only played like six innings because the rain wouldn't stop. But we did see the World Series there in 1997 and 2003. We've seen a ton of playoff games and World Series games in that building and a few Dolphin games, especially in 1998 when the Jets were there and they took care of business after we were in Tampa. And we saw the, we saw the Steelers. Steelers played the Buccaneers in the rain that day. Then we took a Southwest Airlines flight. It was December 13th, I believe, 1998. Back to Fort Lauderdale. Yeah, everything since, since September 11, 2001, you got to draw the line. What you did before that and what you do after that, because it's so hard to travel nowadays. They want to charge you for every little thing. They make it really tough to travel by plane. So, you know, exactly, yeah. You know, if, if, if the airlines can't gouge you for all the extras, then the terrorists win. I think that's how the credo goes. But. By, by the way, too, th- thanks for bringing up the 1997 World Series, pal. It had been a good long while since I'd even thought about that and tortured myself. Thank you for bringing that back to the fore while you were at it. But uh, well, I, I have to be perfectly honest. I wasn't even I wasn't even thinking about the Indians playing that. I was I had no intent. I just I just know I was at the World Series. Yeah, I'm, I'm starting to be absent minded like the King when it comes to that. Yeah, it comes. Thanks for refreshing my memory. I remember <laughs> Edgar Mentorea. Was a hero of that series. Al Leiter was a big hero. I'm not trying to add insult to injury, but <laughs> yeah, you refresh me. Uh, well, the, better yet, in the 2003 World Series was another World Series that was a classic, and 2000 because we got to see all the games of both World Series. Right. And the King and I, the King and I are both big Mets fans. And boy, in 2003, when the Yankees 
when Josh Beckett came into Yankee Stadium, did what nobody else could do, win a game six there and shove it down the Yankee Stadium fans' throats. Boy, they were in stunned disbelief. It was, it was amazing. Yeah. That well, was that was uh, that was a good moment uh, during the thing, anyways. But uh, you know, I just look forward to hearing more of how this uh, modern adaptation of the King and I unfolds all across the country here at all these different sporting events and everything else here, Gary. We're going to keep up with you with everything that's happening on your site here, RoyaltyTours.blogspot.com, and. Uh, we, again, as I've indicated to you off air, uh, the New York Bureau and I, we are committed to trying to, uh, you know, help you find uh, the right business opportunities to, to maximize this thing here. A story like this needs to keep going, needs to keep unfolding, and uh, we, as your new friends, want to do what we can to uh, play a productive uh, part in that. It was great to have you on here tonight. We, of course, only scratched the surface with you, as is going to be the case with something like this. Look forward to bringing you back over time. I know you don't have a whole lot of stray nights off here, but when you do, uh, look us up, my man, and we'll, uh, we'll, we'll do it again. I can't thank you enough for having me on, Rick. I hope I can find many Tuesday nights to be off because coming on and talking to you would be an absolute pleasure. Thank you. I, I appreciate you that, enough. Gary. It's, I, I, it's great to have you. I can't thank you enough. I, 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 I an speak... absolute pleasure. Thank you. And I, I mean speak... that from the bottom of my heart. No question about it. Thanks. You, you, this is this is a night for me to remember forever. This this is unreal. It's been okay. quite a day. I secured these. I'm in the works of finalizing this deal for tickets. My friend's going to pick them up. I knew I was coming on with you. It's just been unreal. I better I better block some Tuesday nights out. I need to free myself up and make time for you. Okay. All right. We'll 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 keep getting yeah. stories from you. We'll we'll keep uh you know. Uh, hitting you up for stories about how this is going here. We love stories on this show, and you know everybody involved, all the FDH Lounge dignitaries uh, involved, all the members of the ensemble. We're excited to get you on and know we're going to do this. Thanks, Gary. I promise we'll do it again soon. That sounds great. Thanks all right. again, Rick. Take care, friend. Night. Good to have you on, Gary Herman.